How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe, and this video is probably not going to be too long, but we're going to be talking about the new Windows Terminal. Yes, very exciting, I know, but it's actually pretty cool because you guys may have seen the command prompt that this thing has been around for like 30 years or something, but it is finally getting a facelift and Microsoft is programming some pretty cool features into it that is going to be really convenient if you ever want to use the command prompt again. Even if you're not familiar with it, I think you'll still enjoy it. So let's get started into some of these features. And what I really think is funny is Microsoft actually created a trailer for this new Windows Terminal app. Yes, they created like an epic uh, trailer to build hype for this thing, I guess. But it actually is pretty cool. It shows off some of the features they're gonna try and put in there, including things like emojis in the terminal. Yes, that will be a possibility. Now, one thing to point out is the command prompt you're currently used to is not really gonna be going anywhere because I have to specify there's a difference between the terminal slash console and the command line app slash shell. So those are different kind of sets of things that I can quickly explain. And these diagrams here are actually from a presentation that Microsoft gave on the new terminal. But you can see that the terminal console is basically just kind of an interface app that connects with the actual command line app or the shell. So what you're seeing as the terminal is really just a skin. It's like a user interface of the command line. The command line actually receives all the text and the terminal sends the text and looks nice and presents things in a way that a human can understand while the command line or the shell is the thing that the computer understands and that just gets connected. And to illustrate this, you might not have realized this, but when you type in CMD like to bring up the command prompt, you're not actually seeing the CMD program. What the heck do I mean by that? You're actually seeing what is called the con host, the console host. And if you don't believe me, you can actually type in con host into the start menu, press enter, and it will open the same exact thing you're used to seeing. So basically the con host is the actual console and the CMD is the command line and Windows just kind of merges them together so users don't have to worry about that. But if you type one or the other in, you'll see the same thing because when you open CMD program, cmd.exe, it kind of opens up this wrapper and presents that to you because you can't really directly interact with the command line. That's what the console is for. Anyway, the point of me telling you this is so you can understand that the new terminal is really just a user interface thing. It's kind of like a skin, whereas behind the scenes, from my understanding, all the commands, everything is still gonna be working the same behind the scenes, and Microsoft is just building this very nice front interface that is really overdue, that gives more features in the way that it can visually present things like more colors and better ways of laying out text and that sort of thing. Anyway, one of the biggest differences you'll see is the new terminal actually has tabs now. So yes, you can open multiple types of consoles or terminals. You can open the regular command CMD type terminal, or you can also open PowerShell, which is kind of like what Microsoft is trying to push is the default. You can also open what is called the Azure Cloud Shell. And this is like if you have an Azure cloud computer thing going. Azure is like a cloud service Microsoft has. If you've never heard of it before, don't worry about it. But this basically allows you to, of course, with tabs, you can pretty much imagine you can open multiple of these as if you open multiple CMD windows. Also, the visuals of the terminal look a lot different and you can customize it a lot. So for example, you can see that it has this kind of acrylic type background is what they're calling it, which basically just means it's like see-through and kind of blurry. Or you can have a custom image as the background. Yes, you can have whatever you want as the background, literally. And you can actually customize it in a few different ways. You can go to the settings and it opens up JSON file. So you can go through this and manually change literally anything you want about it. Or if you want to change the opacity of the background color, you can press control shift and then scroll and that will change the opacity or you can press control scroll and also change the text size so you don't have to go into the settings to do any of that. They've also got several features coming down the pipe. So for example, they talked about having connectivity to remote shells. So obviously these are local things where you open a new window for CMD, that's just the CMD program on that computer. But say you wanted to access the shell for your Raspberry Pi, you could have a predetermined profile for that, you open it up and then you, I don't think, would have to use something like PuTTY or whatever, which is like a standalone program you install third party. I think this would allow you to basically have a profile ready to go anytime you want to access a remote shell for some other random computer, you would just be able to open it directly in a new tab. Another funny feature they're adding is, yes, emojis, and not just emojis, they're adding a lot of different 
text support and emojis are included in that. It's not like they decided, hey, you know what, we should add emojis and nothing else. They're adding that as part of a lot of stuff. I don't think they really expect anyone to actually use emojis. It's just kind of funny. Now this is a preview build. It's not gonna be anywhere near the final build. So we're at version 0.3 and I think they're gonna make the final public build at 1.0. And they said that they're trying to release that I think in the winter. So by the end of the year, hopefully. Now you can download the preview build either from the Microsoft App Store or or from Microsoft's GitHub. I'll put both links in the description. But one thing to keep in mind is you're gonna have to have the latest uh, Windows May 2019 update, so build 1903 to be able to run this terminal. Otherwise, it won't work. I think there is a specific build they have on there, but if you have the 1903 update, you should be able to cover it. So this is pretty cool. It's not super exciting, but I mean, it's still really neat that they're finally upgrading this command prompt or the console that's been kind of the same for the past how many decades and now they're finally kind of bringing it into the 21st century. So I recommend you download it, check it out. It's not going to be the default, I don't think, but you can like bookmark it or put in the taskbar and then use it now if you want. And I guess that's pretty much it. So up next, you guys definitely will want to watch this other video I made about the changes coming to the Windows 10 update schedule. You know how usually they do it every six months with a major update? That is now changing. I explained that in this other video. So definitely if you want to keep up to date on Windows, then that's something you'll probably want to be interested in. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.